During the Russo-Ukrainian conflict, the MLRS M142 HIMARS and their tracked counterpart M270 had a significant impact on the course of the war. It was after their targeted strikes on the enemy's rear positions that the armed forces of Ukraine were able to launch a counter-offensive and liberate thousands of square miles of their territory. And it's very likely that they'll soon be even more effective and formidable against the enemy. Now ATACMS missiles are on their way and will be delivered to the battlefield before long. The Army Tactical Missile System ATACMS, MGM-140 is a series of short-range mobile solid propellant surface-to-surface -surface SSM ballistic missiles. The main purpose of using ATACMS is to eliminate command posts, missile launchers, air defense systems, transport and communication centers, fuel and maintenance trains, and enemy command posts deep behind the front line. The U.S. Army's need to create missiles of this type was made back in 1980. In 1982, the U.S. Department of Defense merged two similar U.S. Army and USAF programs under the name JTACMS, Joint Tactical Missile System. However, three years later, the USAF withdrew from the project, which made it entirely an Army matter put under the now familiar name of ATACMS. From the very beginning, different companies fought for its development. Boeing Aerospace, Emerson Electric, Martin Marietta, Northrop, and Laurel Vought Corporation. Finally, the latter won the ability to manufacture these systems in May of 1986. The design was implemented over four years, until in March 1990, the first demonstration model was successfully tested at the White Sands Military Training Ground. The ATACMS were put into service in 1991, which was rather timely, given that the war in the Persian Gulf had just begun at that point. It was here that, as part of Operation Desert Storm, the system was first used in combat conditions. In total, 32 ATACMS missiles were used in battles against the Iraqi army in 1991. And 12 years later, as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom, 450 missiles were launched at the enemy. In total, during the program's existence, 560 ATACMS missiles were used by US troops. In other words, 78 missiles were used against other enemies of the United States. The missile system has several different variations that determine the type of warhead and range. There are now three variants of the ATACMS in service with different countries. The Standard Block 1, the Extended Range Block 1A, the Block 1A Unitary, used to break hard targets. Let's take a closer look at each of these modifications. The range on the Standard Block 1 is about 100 miles. The warhead's weight for this modification is about 1,234 pounds. It's equipped with 950 M74 submunitions, which are small pellets 0.192 feet in diameter that weigh 4.8 pounds. The main purpose behind this modification is to destroy important targets in the rear section of forces, such as airfields, sites with anti-aircraft missiles SAM, artillery and or missile units, supply areas, and command groups. The presence of submunitions poses a threat to infantry, which are located in open areas and present moving objects. This missile variant exists for export. It was purchased by Bahrain, Greece, South Korea, UAE, Turkey, and Taiwan. Since 2009, this modification has been gradually withdrawn from service, making way for the Extended Range Block 1A. This variant can hit targets located anywhere from 62 to 168 miles for a unitary warhead and 190 miles for a submunition. The weight of the warhead is about 350 pounds. This variation uses an inertial guidance system combined with a global positioning system GPS satellite. Its accuracy tolerance is about 32 to 160 feet. The cluster variation can carry up to 300 submunitions. A sub-variant is the TAC-MS Penetrator, equipped with an Mark IV penetrating warhead. Its range goes to about 155 miles. The Block 1A Unitary or IVA block is used for hardened targets. 
This is an improved version of the 1A type. It began to enter service back in 2002. It has the same guidance system, only the range has been increased to 190 miles. The maximum possible for this type of missile, according to international treaties. Instead of a cluster warhead, a 213kg AGM RGM 84 harpoon or 247kg SLAM ER is used. The missile's main purpose here is to destroy critical enemy targets without collateral damage, all while operating in any weather. During tests conducted in 2008, the missile successfully hit right on target. It should also be noted that classifying an ATACMS as a ballistic missile is not entirely correct, since such a classification assumes that the projectile flies along a ballistic trajectory. Although the ATACMS assumes a ballistic arc of its target, it also performs a series of quick and sudden turns and course corrections on the way to its aiming point, with a top speed of 1.61 miles per hour. This is a special feature possessed by the ATACMS. As this seemingly erratic in flight behavior makes it extremely difficult to track or intercept. This class of weapon is therefore often referred to as a quasi ballistic missile, although the US Army also refers to the ATACMS as a maneuverable missile. The development of an anti tank version and missiles that could carry a nuclear charge was also considered. But these ideas, at least officially, were abandoned by the Pentagon. In the early 2000s, after the bankruptcy of Laurel Vought Corporation, ATACMS production was taken over by Lockheed Martin. Then, in 2007, the program was closed. To maintain remaining stocks, the ATACMS Life Extension Program SLAP, was launched, which upgrades or replaces propulsion and navigation systems replaces cluster munition warheads with a unitary fragmentation warhead, and adds a close fuse option for area effects. Its launch was scheduled to begin in 2018. The ATACMS SLEP was a bridging initiative that was meant to provide time to complete analysis and develop the capabilities of a successor to the legacy stock of ATACMS, which might now be ready in the near future. In March 2016, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Raytheon announced that they would offer a missile that meets the US Army's Long Range Precision Fire LRPF, requirements to replace the ATACMS. The missile would use an advanced propulsion system to fly faster and farther, expected range up to 310 miles, while at the same time being thinner and sleeker, increasing the load to two per pod doubling the number of units that the M270, MLRS, and launchers can carry. The M142 HIMARS are the main platforms for launching ATACMS. Now let's take a look at them in more detail. The M270, MLRS, also known as the M270, MLRS Self-Propelled Loader Launcher, SPLL, is a tracked salvo fire platform with the ability to quickly depart the area before a potential counter-battery strike after firing. It was developed jointly by the UK, USA, Germany, and France. The M270 uses the M269 Loader Launcher Module LLM, charging module, which also contains an electronic fire control system linked to the M993 transport vehicle, a derivative of the Bradley Combat Vehicle chassis. ATACMS rockets and missiles sit in interchangeable containers. Each pod contains six standard projectiles firing up to 27 miles, or one ATACMS guided missile. At the same time, the two different types of projectiles cannot be fired at the same time. The LLM can hold two capsules at the same time, which are manually loaded using the built-in winch system. All 12 rockets or two ATACMS missiles can be fired in less than a minute. The M270 entered service in 1983 and 20 years later the last batch was delivered to Egypt. Since then, no new weapons have been produced, but modernization has still been carried out. In 2006, it had the option to fire guided projectiles. Then this novelty was immediately applied on the battlefield in Iraq. The XM-31 guided projectile was then used. In 2012, the armor and controls were improved. In 2013, a program for a new type of GMLRS cluster projectiles was launched. 
Another ATACMS missile launch platform is the M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, HIMARS. It's lighter than the M270, 15 tons versus 27, which allows it to move faster on its wheelbase. HIMARS uses the same launch system as the M270, but only one of its set packages. That is, it launches either six MLRS missiles or one Army tactical missile. The HIMARS design concept includes the familiar launcher module, fire control, digital command and control systems, and self-reload capability. HIMARS can be deployed from a C-130 transport aircraft and, when transported with a combat payload, is ready for operation within 15 minutes after landing. The crew consists of three people. The HIMARS launcher is made up of a carrier, the vehicle part, and a fire control system FCS, that calculates all fire mission data, as well as a part of the launch charge module LLM, that performs all operations necessary to complete the fire mission. HIMARS also performs reload operations via a reload arm assembly. The first firing was successfully carried out on May 20, 1998, at the White Sands Missile Range. The first sample units of these systems entered service with the Marine Corps in 2005. On April 12, 2007, Lockheed Martin began full-scale production of the HIMARS launcher at its factory in Camden, Arkansas. By the end of 2009, about 250 HIMARS had been manufactured for the Army and Marine Corps. In total, 900 units were set to be produced and the estimated cost of each being about $12 million. Similarly, the M270 HIMARS is also in the GM LRS program. There's also the export of the systems to the United Arab Emirates, also in transit through them to Qatar, Singapore, and other countries. Since the end of June 2022, the M142 HIMARS and M270 MLRS platforms have been actively used in the armed forces of Ukraine against the occupying forces of the Russian Federation. According to official information, by the beginning of autumn, Ukrainian troops had received more than 20 of these platforms in total. However, the official data may not be all that complete. The use of Western-style MLRS was critically necessary for Ukrainian soldiers, since they were running out of shells in the corresponding Soviet-style systems. Additionally, these stores were unrecoverable if hit by Russian fire. It's currently reported that only limited-range projectiles have been provided for HIMARS and the M270. However, even in this format, the supply of these MLRS made it possible to first create fire parity at the front and even shift the balance in favor of Ukraine in some of its sectors. This became possible due to the elimination of certain important targets with Russian forces along the front line. At first, strikes were made against warehouses containing weapons, fuels, and machine lubricants. The superior accuracy of these MLRS strikes made it possible to deprive the Russians of the necessary resources for further offensive operations via pinpoint strikes without excessive expenditure of resources. Their barrage of fire tactics, a massive artillery barrage, requires a large number of shells. The destruction of warehouses storing ammunition deprived the Russians of this. The next targets for HIMARS and M270 were enemy air defenses and transport hubs. The destruction of their air defense cleared the way for Ukrainian aviation, UAVs, helicopters, and attack aircraft, and also opened up the possibility of striking enemy targets by the Ukrainian Tachka U tactical systems, with a range of up to 75 miles more than those warheads that are now officially supplied for Ukrainian M270 and HIMARS. All of these actions have put a critical strain on Russia's already poorly performing logistics. This finally opened up opportunities for a Ukrainian counteroffensive, a further increase in the supply of both the MLRS installations themselves and the shells for them on the eve of the counteroffensive further changed the tactics of using these systems. During the Ukrainian counteroffensive, which began on August 29, 2022, the HIMARS and M270 actively struck the command posts of Russian troops and the places where their equipment and manpower were accumulated, along with the other previously mentioned targets, thus forcing Russian troops to disperse their manpower 
as their tactics had not yet adapted. Supplying Ukraine with ATACMS will significantly affect the further course of the war. In fact, this will kick off a whole new phase, which will mark an advantage on the part of the Ukrainian troops at the operational, tactical level. The fact is that the Ukrainian army doesn't employ a significant concentration of troops in its tactics, which, combined with the enemy's weak intelligence, significantly affects the effectiveness of Russia's operational tactical systems. The Russian army itself is not ready to disperse its military resources. Therefore, the possibility of delivering strikes hundreds of miles deep behind the front line can be fatal for the Russian supply system and operational command and control. Well, that's all for today. What kind of amazing work awaits us at the end of the decade? And when will it finally be revealed to everyone? If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.